So you found out this thing has the highest DPS of all of Scout's melee options and thought you could go on a kill streak with it, only to find out that the only person you can consistently kill with this thing is yourself. Well then, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer and show you how to get a kill streak with it. Because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, as you could tell from reading the title of this video, we'll be covering the Boston Basher. So without further ado, let's get into it. You just got freaking dominated, Knucklehead! Alright, let's do this! The Boston Basher is unquestionably amongst the easiest to explain of the weapon unlocks in the scout's melee arsenal. When you hit someone with this weapon, you deal an additional 5 seconds of bleed damage at the risk of hitting yourself if your melee swing fails to hit anything, causing you to take bleed damage alongside the base damage of the swing itself. If you want this item for yourself, it can be crafted using a Sandman and a Tribal Man's Shiv, unboxed in strange quality from crate number 23, or you can be like everyone else and just trade for it or wait for a random drop to give it to you. When it comes to dealing self-harm with this thing, you will be pleased to note that it can't crit yourself, meaning random crits, the Criticola, and the Crits Krieg will not enhance the damage inflicted on you with this whatsoever. Meaning, unlike rocket jumping soldiers, you don't need to worry about killing yourself with a random crit. Yes, that actually happened to me once, and I'm still salty about it. Ruined my first ever kill streak as soldier. Moving back to the subject of the Basher, avoiding the self harm is rather easy if you play with any degree of caution, which, given how most players act with reckless abandon, is probably the reason why you never see this thing being used in pubs. You see, you only hurt yourself if you hit nothing, meaning if you hit friendly teammates, floors, walls, or even engineer buildings, the self harm won't trigger whatsoever. This means unless you're swinging your melee around mindlessly, killing yourself with a self harm will seldom be an issue. However, nobody's perfect and lag is an issue sometimes. So when one or both of these things become problematic, consider using the Pocket Boy's Pistol or the Mad Milk, as their self-healing potential can prove invaluable when dealing with the self-harm of the Boston Basher. The Mad Milk is especially good since not only does it work in medieval mode unlike the pistols, but the damage over time of the bleed damage actually combos with the milk since the damage over time will actually trigger the Mad Milk's healing properties, meaning that if you end up covering someone in milk and then hitting them with the Boston Basher, the bleed over time will result in you being able to regenerate your health for a short time. This is perfect for those of you who end up missing one or two of your shots during a fight and want to top off your health without running back to a health pack. However, if you find yourself so good with the bash you never inflict harm on yourself with it, or if you're just so good at picking up health packs on medieval mode that you don't need to worry about the bleed killing you whatsoever, consider grabbing the flying guillotine since it grants you a ranged alternative to finish off foes under group keep. On the subject of healing, however, a popular tactic to use with this weapon is to use the self-harm factor of this item to help medics build up uber charge faster. This can prove to be an invaluable tool when playing competitive mode, but given how medics tend to be an endangered species in casual, and the fact that even if you do see them in casual, they'll usually just be pocketing one person and ignoring you completely, I honestly can't recommend switching to this weapon specifically to do this when playing casual. In fact, when you consider the fact that your primary weapons end up doing better damage than the Basher at point blank distance anyway, it's honestly kinda hard to recommend using this thing as a primary form of damage. When it comes to synergies with your primary weapons, however, the Boston Basher doesn't really have anything going for it. You see, your primary weapons actually outdamage your melees considerably at point blank range, and that's even when you consider the bleed damage that the Basher does. The closest thing the Basher has to synergy with your primary weapons is how the Force of Nature and Soda Pop are allowed you to tank flank routes that would otherwise be inaccessible to you, which can make getting melee kills easier by catching players off guard. Meanwhile, the shortstop, baby faces, blaster, and backscatter are objectively terrible weapons in the majority of situations. Hence why you almost never see them in pubs whatsoever. Save for the occasional Gibbous noob who found one for a random drop. As a result of all this, there is basically no situation where you'll want to use your melee over your primary weapon as a means of doing damage. However, realistically this is a weapon you pull out when you don't have time to reload and want to finish someone off. However, in these situations, you will almost never see the benefits of having the bleed damage inflicted on another whatsoever. But then again, damage over time effects are frankly overrated in this game. After all, grabbing a single health pack can easily undo them instantly. And when you consider stuff like the medics, dispensers, and heavy lunchbox items, and you quickly realize that healing yourself when people aren't actively shooting at you is rather easy. 
So while once in a blue moon you might occasionally kill someone who was able to survive a fight with you with a sliver of their health, usually they'll just have enough health to run back to a health pack, a medic, a dispenser, or some other form of healing rather easily, making the entire selling point of this weapon kind of moot. This is especially problematic on medieval mode where the majority of people are playing Demo Knight or Huntsman Sniper who can outrange you, and you yourself are dropping health packs on your death, meaning that even if you do get someone to start bleeding, they'll be able to stop it immediately after killing you. All in all, I give the Boston Basher a viable out of 10. It's a perfectly serviceable side grade to the stock melee for Scout. It's a rather simple weapon, all things considered, however don't mistake its simplicity for a lack of viability. This weapon can be a real menace in the right hands. And those hands are not mine. Avenge me, brother! I would like to thank you all for watching. Please be sure to like the video if you did, comment what weapons you want to see me cover in the future, as well as anything you think I might have missed about the Boston Basher. Consider subscribing if you don't want to miss the next video I do, and consider following me on Twitter since YouTube notifications seem to be an unreliable source of getting info on when I upload new videos, and I always share my latest videos on Twitter as soon as they go up. Link will be in the description. Also consider checking out my community tab poll here on YouTube since that's where I hold polls to decide what weapons I cover in the future based on popular vote. And what ends up on those polls is in no small part determined based on what you people are commenting down below. With all that said, I've been Aeneon, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Streak Guide to the Boston Basher. And stay tuned, the Sticky Jumper is coming up next.